This is Nelson. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over changing the tire and inner tube on the Hemingway Cruiser and also talking about some of the preventive maintenance you could use for your Hemingway tire. So when it comes to tire repair and also tire maintenance, I've put together a few samples of products in the market that can help with your tire repair needs. Uh, here up front in the middle we have the basic tire repair kit uh, complete with patches, the, the glue, a little scuff tool. Uh, it comes in a nice little little box to you know put in a little bag on your bike. Very portable, you know, very handy uh, for those immediate tire repairs you know on the road or in the trail. Uh, next we have um, slime which is a which is a liquid that is uh, put into your inner tube and if there should be a pinhole uh, air leak or any type of air, it, it seals that leak. And then you move on to the liners and here we have Tannis Armor and we have uh, Mr. Tuffy. Uh, these are liners that actually go between your inner tube and your tire. So they sit there and provide an, an added layer to prevent the, any punctures from getting into your inner tube. You might still get a puncture through the tire but these help with uh, or at least prevent the, uh, the object puncturing the inner tube. Uh, this is rolls, like I said, which go between the inner tube and tire. And then Tannis Armor uh, is a, probably about that thick. And it also has sidewall protection as well. So links to these products will be down below in the description. And I want to say thanks to you know some of these manufacturers who actually helped me uh, with this video by providing me with some samples to show to you guys and share with you guys. And there'll be videos uh, on Tannis Armor later in the future with putting those and installing those into the tire and the bike. Okay, so here we have the Hemiway Cruiser Kendra tire. Now, Hemiway advertises these tires as puncture resistant and uh, obviously to a degree, uh, anything would be impenetrable. So even with a puncture resistant tire, you can still get flats uh, if they are serious uh, projectiles going through uh, the rubber of the tire and into the inner tube. So uh, I want to first show you a few of the items that you could use, uh, some of the tools necessary to, uh, uh, you could change these things. I'm, I'm going to use a little Allen wrench to uh, depress the valve right there so we can get the air out. And then you want to have some tire lever levers, okay? These are used to get into over the rim and into the tire, or the and just pull it out on over the rim. Now you can use, you know, a screwdriver, a metal screwdriver, or various other tools. I like to use these little plastic, hard plastic levers. That way, I don't scratch the rim or anything like that, or scratch the spokes. So. I'm using levers and then you definitely want to have some sort of uh, tire pump or tire inflator and I'm using a, a, a portable electric tire inflator. All right, so let's go ahead and start by removing the valve cover off the valve stem. So here it is right here. Unscrew it off. Here is your cover. Here is your valve. It looks just like this. And we're going to use, like I said, I just use these little Allen wrenches and I just put it right on top of the little valve and let the air out. Just like that. If you can see. Now this process could take a while. As the further you go, you'll start to hear the tire um, loosen up. You hear some like some noises coming from the, around the edges of the rim. Totally normal, totally fine. Keep in mind that as you're pushing this down into the the valve to release the air, you're also pushing the inner tube uh, down in there as well. And so what we want to do is also compress up on top here. We want to compress the you know, air and force it out as you're holding the valve down. So that's how you're going to force a lot of the air out. 
All right, as you can see, uh, here's our valve. We have uh, released all of the air out of the inner tube. You can squeeze it, it's all out. So now we need to get this part out and over the rim. So we use these levers as leverage. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to put, you don't want to start here at the valve. You want to start maybe about six inches from the valve because uh, you don't want to wind up accidentally grabbing the inner tube and pulling the valve. So we're going to take the lever and we're just going to put it right in here and then lift it. And over. All right, so we've got it started right there, and there's a reason why there's a hook on 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 these levers, and it, this hook actually goes around that spoke. That way, it stays in place. That's why I like these levers better. Uh, now, like I said, you can use other tools. So with it being open like that, I can get other levers right in there and move it around the rim. Now if I feel like it's still too tight, I can just do the same thing as before and wrap it around one of the spokes. So I got two levers holding it open and I can get in there some more with another one. Just get right in there. It looks like we've gotten the sweet spot where we can just go all the way around. And there we go. So we've separated the outer wall of the tire from the rim. So our inner tubes, our inner tube is in there. Now we might be able to pull that out. But you have to be very careful because you're going to have to push the valve in first. Get it in there. There we go. And then you can take the inner tube out. Still a good amount of air left in the inner tube. Sorry for the, the loud banging noise. Now I'm just taking it out. You can, you can do something very similar to this, or you can have it held open a bit wider. I'm just doing that. But I do have, actually it seems like a good amount of air still left in the in the, uh, the inner tube. So that's probably what made it a little bit more difficult. So take a bit more out of the air out of the inner tube, but that'd be a lot easier. Let's get these levers. Okay, so now you can see the uh, we only have one more side to take off, okay, as you can see. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to just start it. We can almost do this with our hands. There we go. And there it is. It's off. So we have the rim. So we have the rim right there. and our tire. Now, depending on if you're changing uh, a flat tire, you really don't know what, or maybe you do, uh, you want to inspect and you know, see what caused the flat tire, which means you might have something stuck in your tire and possibly even your inner tube. So what you want to do is 
look inside the tire, rotate it, move it around, inspect inside, all right, all the way around. Look for any projectiles protruding through the rubber. All right. And we're going to do the same with the inner tube. Now, it does have a little bit of air in it, so actually, that's actually a good thing, because if your tire, if your inner tube wasn't already flat from something, you might have a little bit of air or, or a very slow leak. And if you have a slow leak, it's really easy, it's a lot easier anyway to find a leak. Um, make sure you put some air, you can pump it up with a tire inflator. Put some air in the inner tube, and then just listen, move it around, squeeze it, force some air out, and listen for any hissing sounds. Or you can get a bucket, fill it with water, and then just dip your tire in the water, and, and just move the, the tube around inside the, the bucket of water, or you could use your sink or even a bathtub, and look for any bubbles coming from the inner tube. If you see any bubbles, most likely that is the the hole or your, your leak. So then be sure to mark it or save that spot where it's at. So after checking the tire and the tube, we're going to check the rim. Uh, and the reason why is on the inner wall, you can see where the spokes come in and leave imprints. We wanna check and make sure we don't have anything protruding through that layer that might cause a flat. Everything, everything looks good. So just remember uh, TTR, tire tube and rim. Inspect the, the outer and inner of your tire. Then inspect and find any leaks in your inner tube. And then inspect the outer wall of the uh, inner rim. Okay, so we're gonna put the tire back together again. Now, before we do that, we want to, uh, I can tell right now by looking at this inner tube, we need at least a little bit more air. Uh, not, we're not gonna fill it completely, but we're going to put it enough in there where it's firm enough and it doesn't fold, but it's going to be at least firm, at least to stay inside and not fold over or crease on itself. So we're going to put some air in the tire. We're going to grab our pump. And I want to turn this on. Seems to be about enough. It's it's at least it's firm enough to get in in there, but it's not too full, so we have at least some room to move the tire and manipulate it around the rim. All right, so we're gonna disconnect it. All right, <clears throat> and then we're going to insert the inner tube back inside the tire. And as you can see, because we have the air, we have air in the tire, I mean in the inner tube, it, it seats pretty nice. You can get an idea it's not folding over on, on, on itself. So now we're going to put this tire with the inner tube back on the rim one side at a time. Okay, so before you put the tire on, you definitely want to make sure that you have it in the right direction. So uh, here on the Hemi is the front tire. The brake disc, which is on the other side, is on the left side if you're riding forward. So if we go look at the tire, so looking at the tire, uh, you should see an arrow 
as you can see, there's an arrow right, right here, which is going uh, to my left, which means we have it facing the wrong way if we were going to put it on the on the rim. So we need to turn it. We're going to turn it. So now we have the arrow right here going in the direction, and then we also have the tread going in the direction because the tire will be going this way. It'll be going forward in that rotation. So this is how we're gonna put it on. Okay, so I laid the rim on the, on the table and I have the tire right here. I made sure everything's going the right direction. Now I'm looking at the, at the valve and as you can see the hole in the rim for the valve is right here. This is the first thing that you wanna put in and you want to make sure it is straight and not crooked. So we're going to do that. Right. We're going to pull it through and we're going to, you can't see it but my hand is underneath. I am making sure that the rim or the tire is the, the one, the one wall is already in there. And I'm making sure that my valve is sticking straight up and not in an angle. And I'm just going to go around the tire this way with both hands and make sure that everything is going in. And this is usually the easier part. The harder part will be the other side. Yep, see, it is it now just kind of just fell right through, so we're good. And again, I'm gonna check the stem. The stem is very important to check right here. Make sure the, the stem is sticking straight up and not in an angle. All right. Everything looks good. I'm gonna check this out and make sure we're good on this side. I want to make sure that the inner tube isn't, you know, poking out from the sides. So it's not gonna make sure I had enough air, and we want to make sure everything is lined up with beads and everything. So we're going to set it back down and work on this side. Now I'm gonna just I'm just gonna use my my fingers for now until it starts getting rough and I might start using the levers. And again, this this is the tire's first tire change, so it is very tight. So I can see already that we're getting that, that to that point where it is a little rough. So I'm going to go to trusty lever and just kind of work my way little by little, little by little. There we go. Now be very careful if you decide using, like I said, you can use other household tools like screwdrivers. You definitely want to be careful when using a screwdriver so you don't puncture. Looks like it's going to go right on in. There we go. Hard part is done. Again, check the valve. Make sure the valve is straight. And it's going to sink in there because we don't have full air in there. So we're going to pump the tire up. But before you do that, again, inspect both sides. Make sure the inner tube isn't coming out from the sides in between the, the beads and rim. So all the way around, looks good. This side looks good. All right, so now we're gonna put the air in there. Put in the tire inflator.
Okay. I'm going to turn on. I just turn it on because I just want to let you know we're getting to the point where you might once it starts the inner tube starts filling up the inner tube will tighten on the inner wall of the tire and uh, seal it on the beads of the rim and the inner tire and you might hear a popping noise or some clicking sounds that it might you know happen from different areas of the tire but that's perfectly normal All right, we're about to reach PSI 30, which is the max recommended for Hemingway Kendra tires. And right there, there we go. We just ended it. Let me go ahead and take it off. All right. Again, I'm going to inspect it and make sure that everything is close and tight, nothing protruding. Make sure the inner tube is tucked in. I'm going to do both sides. And my valve stem is straight and not crooked. Well, that is how you replace either your tire or your inner tube. Um, again, if you had a flat or a leak, uh, you would use uh, your patch kit or you could use some of the products that I have displayed on, in this video. And I will, again, leave links to those products in the description below. And now we put the tire back on exactly how we took it off using the, the quick release. And this is Nelson. Thanks for watching the video. Be safe. Thank you.